All right, welcome back to Choices, our uh, series about directors talking about directing. And we have someone I'm very excited for you to meet and to listen to her talk about one of her projects. Her name is Leslie Rathy. She's a writer and director. She's developed projects uh, for numerous uh, networks and uh, has a, a very celebrated career so far. And uh, aside from all that, is a pretty incredible voice. And uh, looking forward to you experiencing her talk about uh, very final scene, final scenes of her short film, Tethered, based on her experiences as a new mom. And uh, let's take a look. Hi, my name is Leslie Rathy, and I am speaking today about a short film that I directed that is based on a half hour TV pilot that I wrote, inspired by my experience as a new mom. Um, so right now we are um, gonna start. This is about seven minutes into the short film, and it is leading up to the climax for our character. She is um, suffering a major identity crisis after having a child, and she is visualizing seeing um, a part of herself when she was younger, like an alter ego. So we, she has largely been ignoring this um, alter ego, but now is a point in which she start, sort of starts to lose it and we are having her confront this person, this vision. So the choice to um, go handheld for this was really important to me for a number of reasons. We were running out of time. We were um, running out of money. We shot this in my home. And um, I wanted to evoke a sense of, of um, confusion and and total chaos. So with um, the score and with shooting back and forth handheld, I thought that that would, that would be the, the best use of, of our time. Um, we also, as you'll see, chose to keep her in a breast pump. Um, one of the goals was to make this as authentic as possible, even though it's a heightened reality. I wanted um, other mothers especially to recognize um, what it really looks like to be a new mother. Um, as you'll see, she is now moving into her bedroom where she is proceeding to get wasted. And um, we wanted to uh, keep that in a wide shot in order to uh, show just a sense of the space. Um, I really like the architecture of my home and I thought it gave it a lot of production value. So we wanted to utilize those wide shots as much as possible. And when she gets onto the bed um, to face her husband, I wanted that comedy to play out um, in a wide because I thought it was, we didn't have to rely on any sort of um, cutaways for her to slip into his onesie, a onesie joke that had been established and set up earlier in, this year, in the show. So when she's slipping into his onesie, it was something that I wanted to um, play the comedy in a wide. And then we eventually punch in to a medium close up of the two of them um, as, as the, the scene unfolds and as she begins to sort of get ill. Um, and we get into some more coverage of that because I think that plays to the comedy. I mean, the whole, the whole point in this particular scene is to try and create as much comedy as possible. So um, I think we're, um, I think we're we're at a point where she is completely broken down. So now we're we've cut to some time later. She's in her bed, and we obviously want to stay on our main character because this is really um, about her and about her psychological um, journey. So now she's in her bed, she's seeing a vision and we're cutting back and forth uh, between her and her alter ego. Um, we, we had tried to do some, um, some over the shoulder shots and placing a stand in so we could establish the two of them in the same space, but we realized that that wasn't necessary as long as we got eye lines correct. Um, and especially because in the very beginning we made it we made it clear that they were in the same they were sharing the same space we thought that that wasn't as important as um, choosing shot sizes that were that best conveyed the emotion that we wanted to 
to get across. And now this is leading up to the final scene of the short film and she is in a psychiatrist's office and I wanted to do a lot of quick cutting because um, the idea was that she thought she had it under control and she just had to sort of cross this off the list to see a psychiatrist and then she would just sort of move on with her life. So um, I wanted to show a certain amount of confidence with the character and um, you know we started wide and now we're pushing in because she's starting to speak about um, things that are a little bit more personal to her right as she her cell phone alarm goes off which she set to um, denote the end of their session so now we're back in a wide and um, showing that level of confidence again just to to express that she um, like by, by staying in the wide, it kind of, it, it, it gives the idea that she doesn't really need anyone else to help her out. And it's only when we punch in is when the kind of the reality of her situation really hits her. So we, we reserved those, those tighter shots for the more serious kind of hits to her psychologically. Um, and then we are nearing the end. Um, I think we go out to a wider shot uh, of the whole office, which we could have started with, but I thought it was more important to jump right into the therapy in already in session. Uh, yeah, and that is it. Thank you so much for listening to me ramble. I don't know if any of it made sense, but um, I'm only doing this one time, so that's what you get. So thanks a lot, Jason, for putting this together. I'm flattered to be a part of it. Bye. Awesome, I hope you enjoyed that. So please, please, if you would like to see more or just to support us with uh, Good Karma, you know, hit like, hit subscribe, comment down below in the comment section if you have uh, any specific questions or requests and have a great day.